Hi, my name is Kim Yu, and I did two degrees at the University of Sheffield. So I did a bachelor's degree in civil engineering and a master's degree in structural engineering. I was born in Malaysia, but I grew up in Brunei, so I have a Malaysian nationality. I am currently working now at a company called Eastwood & Partners. I am working as a graduate civil and structural engineer. I actually uh, worked at um, one company back home in Brunei, so I've done work experience for them last Easter after my bachelor's graduation. I've also did a small internship under John Carr, who's a part-time university lecturer who has his own consultancy firm. He hosted an intern program under the University of Sheffield. I volunteered in Oxfam, so basically I started last, last year in September. I worked as a sales assistant, so basically uh, you would be, I would be working at the till, then I would hand, be handling the sales analysis and conducting the cashing up. Then there will be times where I will be overseeing the shop because the manager wouldn't be in the shop as well. I was part of the University of Sheffield Ultimate Frisbee yeah. team and also part of the Malaysian and Singapore Society Ultimate Frisbee team. During my master, I became more involved, so I joined ISAC, which is uh, basically the largest non-profit student-led organisation. Basically, we worked alongside with other ISAC, um, ISAC societies in the, from different countries and aimed to um, help students uh, get internships or do volu either volunteer or summer internships abroad. I guess it really depends, varies from one, uh, one person to another, but first what I initially did was ask myself what, what type of company did I want to work in, what job I wanted to work and whether if I would, this is the type of job that I wanted to be in. It's quite tiring and troublesome having to send in multiple applications and CVs and covering letters. So my initial jobs uh, strategy was basically to make sure that those are the type of companies that I want to work in, then only I'll start my application. I would then go on to um, uh, attending all the engineering fairs or even events hosted by companies at their office, and so office itself. I guess it, it really depends on quite a lot of factors. Mm -hmm. on, on the one hand, it could, uh, it's basically because of the relevant work experience I have. I brought in um, uh, projects of which I've done in industry before and those I feel were the key factors which actually basically uh, helped me get, get, a, get, get a job and become successful in interviews. You have the experience, you've gone through training and usually in the same industry, you, you for example, for my case, I, I, one of the first few things that I was required to do was make sure, familiarize myself with architectural drawing, make sure I am aware, I can visualize the whole building just from a couple of drawings because you need to actually understand how the building looks, then you can then determine the, how the loading is distributed throughout the building. So I have done this in my previous work experience, where, which would mean that it's less troublesome for the company which I've got the job with to train me up in those uh, areas as well. Every single services that the career service could <laughs> offer, I took initiative to actually uh, take as much as I can basically. It could be as simple as appointments, like 20 minutes appointment, I would then make sure before sending off every application, I would then go through the career service to make sure it's okay, make sure if there's anything I could do to improve it. Mm. Uh, they, I, if I, I could remember that the career service also offered mock interviews. So just before, like maybe a couple of days before my actual interview with companies, I would then take the initiative to, to see whether if I can actually book a mock interview to prepare yeah. and practice. That is quite an interesting question. Basically, I would assume my advice is quite different because upon finishing my bachelor's degree, so basically I, I finished my bachelor's degree, I had no work experience, I have no relevant work experience. I wasn't um, basically a top class student, I was a 2-1 student. To me at that stage, basically after you finish your bachelor's graduation, I would then think it's too late because I have no, work, I have no relevant work experience. I could not actually uh, make myself stand out as a suitable candidate, candidate compared to others who actually started working hard at the start. But uh, basically my advice would be that basically even though it may seem uh, 
quite hard or it might seem almost impossible, there's no harm trying because even though if you don't get the job, you develop yourself as an individual. It was really tiring because I recall that at the start of my master's, during the first semester, I had to go down to Leeds every single week after, right after lectures because I registered for courses outside the university as well. Just as two ways, one is, to, one is to improve myself, improve my understanding of my subject area and also to give me uh, an edge basically in terms of application and stuff. It was very tiring, it was hard but I told myself basically within this one year, make the most of it, work hard and yeah. I got the job in the end. Well, well done and are you enjoying the job? Yes, I definitely, I do really enjoy the job. It's, it's challenging at times but uh, I'm learning something new every single day.